Hello, welcome to the Flip Fusion Film Story Channel. This video will summarize a film that tells about the efforts of an ordinary human being to fight his destiny. This film is titled The Writer's Odyssey, which was released in 2021. Without further ado, let's get into the plot of this movie. The beginning of the film shows a middle-aged man named Guan Ning experiencing a nightmare. He sees a vision of a strange city and the figure of a demon. Guan Ning also hears the screams of his daughter who was kidnapped six years ago. Guan Ning has often dreamed of this since his daughter disappeared until now. Over time, the vision of the strange city and the figure of the demon in his dream became clearer. Then Guan Ning wakes up on a roadside cliff, waiting for something. Shortly thereafter, from a distance he sees a pickup truck passing by. He has been waiting for that truck. Guan Ning throws rocks at the truck. Guan Ning can throw more than ordinary humans. As a result, the pickup truck lost its balance and hit a cliff. Guan Ning then approaches the truck and beats up the driver. Guan Ning has been targeting them for a long time because they are a child kidnapping alley. Guan Ning shows a photo of his daughter named Juzi to the driver. Guan Ning interrogates the pickup driver, but there is no answer. From behind, Guan Ning is hit by the driver's partner. When Guan Ning is unconscious, they both escape. Guan Ning then checks the contents of the truck's container. The truck was carrying several kidnapped children. Guan Ning checks them, but he does not find his daughter. Sometime later, the police come thinking Guan Ning is one of the child kidnapping alleys. He is then secured and taken to the city. On the way, Guan Ning dreams again about his daughter, but suddenly the vision changes to a vision of a strange city in the clouds, and his daughter is tied up by something. Arriving in the city when the opportunity arose, Guan Ning tried to escape. At the end of the road, Guan Ning sees a woman telling him to get into her car. Guan Ning then runs and gets into the woman's car. The woman takes Guan Ning away. The woman's name is Tu Ling. On the way, unexpectedly, Tu Ling learned Guan Ning's identity. She knew that Guan Ning was still trying to find his daughter who had been missing for six years. Tu Ling claims she can help find his daughter. Guan Ning, still confused, is forced to go with Tu Ling. Moving to the middle of nowhere, precisely in the forest, a man named Kongwen ran to escape the pursuit of a demon army led by an old man. At the edge of a cliff, Kongwen is trapped. He doesn't know where else to go. A few moments later, his older sister comes to help. Kongwen's older sister told Kongwen to run away and pushed him into the river. <laughs> the woman then continues her fight with the demons chasing them. From below, Kongwen, worry, climbs back up the cliff until he gets back to the original place. There Conwin saw the leader of the demon army stab his older sister in agony. Before she died, her older sister told Conwin to run. Unexpectedly, the old man, the leader of the demon army, is also dying. He was stabbed in the back with a sword. The old man warned Conwin not to mess with him or his boss would hunt Conwin to the ends of the earth and behead him. But because of emotions, Conwin instead approaches the old man and stabs him to death. Conwin then buried his sister and paid his last respects. When Kongwen is about to leave, he hears strange voices. The voice says, if Kongwen can't run, God Redman will look for him to the ends of the world and will kill Kongwen. Hearing that voice, Kongwen realizes something that it's useless for him to run anymore. Kongwen then makes up his mind to face the Redman God who has been chasing him because whether he runs or not, Kongwen will still die. As Kongwen walks forward, the iron armor on the old man's body suddenly detaches. The armor approaches Kongwen and attaches to his body like a parasite. An eye appears on its chest and the armor, which turns out to be a demon armor descended from hell, can speak. The demon armor admits to having slept for 40 years while attached to the old man because his blood smelled bad. The armor feeds on Kongwen's blood and finds it comfortable as Kongwen's blood tastes fresh. Knowing Kongwen's intention to face the god Redmane, the armor is interested and agrees to help Kongwen in exchange for allowing it to feed on his blood. Kongwen reluctantly agrees. They walk towards the Cloud City where God Redman resides. Meanwhile, Tu Ling takes Guan Ning to a building in Shanghai. There, Tu Ling and Guan Ning watch the leader of Asia's largest technology company, Aladdin Limu, presenting his new product. Tu Ling then shows photos of several girls, one of whom might be Guan Ning's daughter. Guan Ning, who lost his daughter six years ago, no longer recognizes her face. Tu Ling explains that she will help Guan Ning with a DNA test to find his daughter, but with one condition. Tu Ling wants Guan Ning's help. She then plays a streaming broadcast of a young man reading a novel he wrote, telling the story of a young man who wants to fight a god. It turns out the vision of Conwen being chased by demons was from the novel being narrated by the young man. He narrates Conwen's adventure live, stating that Conwen eventually heads northeast, hundreds of miles away to the Cloud City. Hearing this story, Guan Ning recalls something as the story resembles what is in his dreams. 
The man on the screen then continues his story, mentioning that Conwin's arrival makes God Redman feel something. God Redman experiences a severe headache due to an old wound that suddenly hurts. At the same moment, Aladdin's leader Li Mu also experiences a severe headache and collapses. Guan Ning is confused by this event. In the examination room, Tu Ling checks Li Mu's condition. Li Mu then urges Tu Ling not to waste any more time. He wants Guan Ning to start working for him immediately. Tu Ling then exits. Outside, Tu Ling calls for Guan Ning. Here Tu Ling explains the condition for Guan Ning to reunite with his daughter. Tu Ling wants Guan Ning to kill someone. Guan Ning is shocked to hear this. Tu Ling explains that she had studied several people with special abilities and found out about Guan Ning's exceptional throwing skills. Tu Ling wants Guan Ning to kill the young man who read the novel. She explains that her boss believes the novel has magical powers affecting his health. Whenever the god Red Ming character in the novel is in pain, her boss feels the same. Her boss, Li Mu, fears that if Kang Wen successfully kills god Red Ming in the novel's ending, he will also die. Guan Ning doesn't believe Tu Ling's explanation, but she insists she can't do anything as her boss believes it 100%. If Guan Ning wants to meet his daughter, he must help her kill the novel's author. Guan Ning then reluctantly agrees to do it. Tu Ling sends him to Beijing by ship. The novel continues with Kang Wen crossing a storm on a ship towards Cloud City. The young novelist then ends his story. He is also named Kang Wen, having named the main character in his novel after himself. Coincidentally, Guan Ning is also there, following Kang Wen from behind. Kang Wen, who had run out of ideas to continue the story, Kang Wen decided to take a walk. He observes Kang Wen playing soccer and eating. Guan Ning continues to follow Kang Wen until they enter an old library. Inside the library, it turns out that Kang Wen is aware of Guan Ning's presence. Kang Wen realized from the beginning that Guan Ning was following him. Kang Wen approaches Guan Ning and asks, Why are you following me? Confused, Guan Ning claims that he is a fan of Kang Wen. Kang Wen is pleased to hear this and happy that someone is a fan of his. Guan Ning keeps following Kang Wen. On the street, Tu Ling calls Guan Ning, urging him to complete his task. Guan Ning tells Tu Ling to be patient as he does not want to arouse suspicion. On the street, Kang Wen approaches Guan Ning and they introduce themselves. Unexpectedly, a speeding car comes from behind, almost hitting them both and causing them to be thrown down the stairs. The guilty driver apologizes and intends to call the police to help resolve the situation, but Guan Ning, realizing he is a fugitive, Guan Ning flees. Kang Wen is left confused. Below, Kang Wen finds Guan Ning's diary. Kang Wen reads a book containing Guan Ning's dream about the appearance of a cloud city. Kang Wen is shocked. What Guan Ning wrote closely resembles the cloud city described in his novel. Guan Ning's writing inspires Kang Wen to continue his story. The story continues with Kang Wen entering the cloud city. He is in the Naga district. There were so many people there as if they were taking part in a festival. Starting from men, women old and young take part in the festival. There's a giant statue of God Redmain in front of them, and everyone kneels to worship it. This is not just any festival, it's preparation for war with the Bayan district. All residents of the Dragon district carry various weapons for war. The Cloud City, under the rule of God Redmain, consists of 18 districts, commanded to wage war against each other until only one strongest district remains to rule the city. Dua Redman is a crazy leader who likes violence. At the gates of Bayan District, the Dragon District's army prepares to attack. The archers of Bayan District brace for the assault. The attack launches and the archers successfully repel the attacking Dragon District army. Then suddenly three giant air balloons in the shape of dragons came from above. From inside the balloon, several people pelted the Bayan District gate with patrol. Soon after, fire arrows from the Dragon District side ignite, burning and collapsing the gate. The Dragon District's army that invades. Bayan District cannot repel the attack and descends into chaos. The residents of Bayan District are slaughtered, and their valuables are looted by the Dragon District. While Kang Wen is observing, a few Red Knights pass by. Everyone becomes fearful and kneels. The Red Knights are God Redman's demon army. They order the residents to implement a curfew. No one is allowed to roam at night, except during warfare. In the real world, Guan Ning wakes up from his sleep. He is met by Tu Ling, who warns him not to play around and to complete his mission quickly. Guan Ning then goes down to meet Kang Wen again. Kang Wen returns Guan Ning's notebook. Kang Wen thanks him as Guan Ning's notes enabled him to continue his story. Kang Wen mentions he recently struggled to continue his story due to a lack of ideas. Kang Wen is puzzled about how Guan Ning's notes fit so perfectly with his story. Guan Ning angrily responds that he doesn't know. On several occasions, Guan Ning tries to kill Kang Wen but does not go through with it. In a moment, Kang Wen shares that he has been writing his novel for six years without success.
Due to his writing, Kang Wen has lost his job and the people he loves. Hearing this, Guan Ning advises Kang Wen to give up as it's pointless. Kang Wen explains that regardless of what happens, he remains confident that one day he will succeed as long as he keeps writing. After a long walk, Kang Wen suddenly gets an idea and starts writing again. The story continues. In the Cloud City, Kang Wen met a girl who was dragging someone's body. After checking, it turned out that the person was dead. The girl is sad as she is now the only surviving family member and is left alone. After burying her relative for the last respect, she plays a hauntingly beautiful tune on her flute. The sound of the flute reached the ears of one of the Red Knights. The Red Knight then appears before Kang Wen and the girl. The Red Knight moves strangely. Kang Wen and the girl ran away because they were both being chased by the Red Knight. Kang Wen runs through alleys, the Red Knight relentlessly chasing them. Kang Wen then climbs onto rooftops, but the Red Knight continues the pursuit. The Red Knight smashes through houses, relentlessly chasing after Kang Wen. In the alley, the Red Knight pulled Kang Wen's bag. For a moment, the Red Knight behaved strangely. Seizing the opportunity, Kang Wen hit the sword belonging to the Red Knight's mask until it broke. Behind the mask, you could see the bleeding face of a man. The Red Knight then pulled out his axe and intended to kill Kang Wen, but from behind the girl stopped him. The Red Knight turns to approach the girl, but as the sun sets, the Red Knight is silent and does not move. Kang Wen then invited the girl to run away with him for safety. Back in the real world, Guan Ning seizes an opportunity and throws stones at Kang Wen, causing him pain. With Guan Ning's precise throwing skill, a stone hits Kang Wen on the head, knocking him unconscious. Guan Ning approaches Kang Wen's body. Seeing Kang Wen still moving, he intends to kill him. However, at that moment, he hears someone singing a lullaby that he used to sing to his daughter. Startled, Guan Ning follows the sound of the song into an alley. Suddenly, Guan Ning sees an unknown young man singing the lullaby. Guan Ning then asks the young man, who taught him the song that used to accompany his daughter to sleep. However, the young man was frightened and immediately ran away quickly. Guan Ning tries to chase him but fails and ends up lost. Unexpectedly from a distance, Guan Ning spots the child kidnapper he had beaten before. Without hesitation, Guan Ning unleashes his throwing skittles and confronts the kidnapper. He hurls objects at the kidnapper, causing him pain. Guan Ning asked where the person had taken her daughter six years ago. The kidnapper remembered that six years ago when he first kidnapped, he'd injected an anesthetic into a girl, and because it was still early, the dose he gave was too much and the girl died. Guan Ning was shocked and enraged. Then Guan Ning choked the kidnapper. He was hysterical knowing that his daughter had died. Suddenly, Tu Ling arrives and kicks Guan Ning. On the roadside, Limu instructs Tu Ling to persuade Guan Ning to continue his mission. Tu Ling approaches the desperate Guan Ning, explaining that what the kidnapper said might not be true, and that he could be mistaken. However, Guan Ning is emotional and intent on killing the kidnapper. Running out of options, Tu Ling told Guan Ning to cancel his mission, considering his condition. She explains that the kidnapper is now in police custody. Unexpectedly, Guan Ning says that if he succeeds in killing Kang Wen, Tu Ling must help him kill the kidnapper. Guan Ning then leaves. Shortly after, Li Mu arrives and scolds Tu Ling for wanting to free Guan Ning. In front of Li Mu, Tu Ling realizes that Li Mu has been lying, and Guan Ning's daughter has not been found yet. Li Mu has been exploiting Guan Ning's sorrow to kill someone. Li Mu also remarks on Tu Ling's past being an unattended child who was kidnapped, questioning why she should sympathize with a parent like Guan Ning who failed to take care of his child properly. Li Mu then leaves Tu Ling alone. The story in the novel continues. On the streets, the girl tells Kan Wen about the emperor's two favorite generals, Red Mane and Chu Shen. Once upon a time, the emperor disappeared without a trace. Red Mane then took over, leading those who opposed his rule to be killed and beheaded. General Chiushin, upon hearing this, confronts Red Mane. Red Mane invites Chiushin, who he considers like a brother, to join in and offers to make him prime minister. However, Chiushin refuses and starts to fight against Red Mane. Eventually, Chiushin is killed and Red Mane orders his men to annihilate every member of the Chiushin clan. In front of her house, the girl reveals to Kang Wen that she is all alone. Several years ago, his parents went looking for dinner and missed curfew. As a result, the two of them never came back until now. She deeply misses her parents. Soon after, some people from the Dragon District come to loot the girl's house. Finding no valuables, they intend to kill Kang Wen and the girl. Unexpectedly, the eye on Kang Wen's chest moves. The armor woke up from its slumber. In the real world, Guan Ning meets Kang Wen, who is recovered on top of a building. Kang Wen shares that someone unseen threw a stone at him, causing him to faint. For a moment, Kang Wen felt that dying was better than being a useless person.
Standing at the edge of the building, he says, If someone were to push me, I would surely die. Guan Ning walks towards Kang Wen, intending to push him. Still, Kang Wen reveals that he can't die yet because he is incorporating Guan Ning into his novel, inspired by Guan Ning's diary. Shocked, Guan Ning reads Kang Wen's notes. Kang Wen mentions creating a character who attacked the girl and had a scar on his temple, just like Guan Ning. Kang Wen explains that the Red Knight is drawn to Juzi's flute music. Guan Ning was even more shocked that Kang Wen named the girl from Bayan District Juzi, which is the same name as his missing daughter. Guan Ning then becomes more convinced of the connection between Kang Wen's novel and his dreams. Guan Ning asks if Kang Wen's novel can change reality. Kang Wen confused, says he needs more ideas to continue the story. He's stuck at a part where Juzi and he are surrounded by people. Guan Ning then suggests the idea of the demon armor worn by Kang Wen. Kang Wen is surprised and inspired. He slips from the building's edge, but Guan Ning manages to grab his hand and save him. The story in the novel continues, surrounded by the people of the Dragon District. The armor on Kan Wen reacts, revealing its true form, a one-eyed demon. The one-eyed demon slashes through the Dragon District's forces mercilessly. The demon saved Kan Wen who was forced to kill all the enemies until there was only one small child left, a resident of the Dragon District. The demon is about to kill the child, but Kan Wen, who can control the demon's body, stops it. Surprisingly, Kan Wen can command the demon due to the demon consuming too much of Kan Wen's blood. The demon cries, realizing that a mere human can command it. Kang Wen then orders the demon to reattach his body. In the real world, Guan Ning calls Tu Ling, explaining that he won't kill Kang Wen. He decides to help Kang Wen finish his novel. Even if he can't meet his daughter Juzi in reality, at least she can live forever in Kang Wen's novel. In Kang Wen's room, Guan Ning helps him complete the story. Guan Ning looked at the photo. Kang Wen explained that it was a photo of his father and his colleague. Li Mu when they first started a laden. They had an accident and Kang Wen's father died. Outside, Tu Ling overhears this conversation. Inside, Guan Ning realizes something and tells Kang Wen to pack and go somewhere safe. On the street, Tu Ling having heard the shocking fact, calls Li Mu. She suspects there's another motive behind Li Mu's desire to kill Kang Wen. She suspects Li Mu is hiding something from her. Tu Ling expressed his retreat and did not want to help Li Mu anymore. In his car, blood flows from Li Mu's nose, indicating his illness is worsening. Elsewhere, Tu Ling is electrocuted by someone and then forced into a car. Meanwhile, Guan Ning and Kang Wen who were in front got into the taxi. The car carrying Tu Ling followed closely behind. Guan Ning takes Kang Wen into a library. Inside, Kang Wen continued writing his novel, while Guan Ning prepared some balls just in case. In the novel story, Kang Wen and Juzi unexpectedly manage to easily enter the palace of God Redmain that night. Kang Wen urges Juzi to go home, but she is curious, having heard that people who disappear are taken to Redmain's palace to become his minions. Juzi wants to search for her parents there. They open a gate and unexpectedly find thousands of motionless Red Knights seated. Kang Wen bravely approaches one and discovers that it collapses upon touch. He realizes why Redman prohibits people from going out at night because the Red Knight can't move at night, a fact Redman doesn't want people to know. Back in reality, Guan Ning sees some people entering the library. Guan Ning checked, and it turned out that it was true that two people intended to kill Kan Wen. Guan Ning threw the ball at the two of them, and one of them shocked Guan Ning with a tool on his stomach. Despite this, Guan Ning, with his throwing skills, tries to defend himself. In the novel, Kang Wen tells the demon armor in his body to help him, promising to free it after Red Main's death. In the library, the man with the electric device locates Guan Ning's hiding place. Guan Ning uses his last ball, but the man dodges and increases the electric current from his device, touching Guan Ning's hand. Unexpectedly, the touch causes the device to short circuit, and the man falls charred. It turned out that Guan Ning was wearing rubber gloves. In the novel, Kang Wen and Juzi enter a cave where they hear loud drumming sounds but find no one there. Kang Wen shouts, challenging God Redmain to appear before him. Juzi then realizes that the sound they hear is not drumming but the heartbeat of the Redmain before them. Back in the library, Guan Ning confronts the remaining enemy. Surprisingly, the man injects himself with a doping substance, gaining superhuman strength, and attacks Guan Ning fiercely. Meanwhile, in the car, Tu Ling regains consciousness and tries to free herself. In the library, as Guan Ning is cornered, Tu Ling arrives to save him. Tu Ling struggled against the villain. Just as the villain is about to hit Tu Ling, Guan Ning throws a ball at him. The villain managed to hit the ball, but unexpectedly, there were two balls thrown, which hit the villain right on his head, causing him to faint. 
The novel's story continues. Redmayne recognizes Kongwen's scent and reveals that Kongwen is the son of his former comrade Xiushan. Redmayne takes Kongwen somewhere. In front of a tree, Redmayne explained that under that tree Xiushan's body was buried. When he was in human form, Xiushan was like a brother to him. The two of them fought and spent time together. However, Xiushan refused to submit to Redmayne, forcing Redmayne to kill him. Now, with the demon's help, Redmayne turns into a powerful, invincible creature. Kongwen and the demon armor split up to attack Redmayne but struggle due to Redmayne's immense size. Despite their combined efforts, Redmayne proves too strong for them. Redmayne tightly grasps Conwen, causing him pain. The demon armor sword frees Conwen, but an enraged Redmayne crushes the demon armor into pieces. As Redmayne is about to kill Conwen, Juzi's flute music is heard from behind. Remembering her father's words that he would come to her aid if she played the flute, Juzi does so. Disturbed by the sound, Redmayne releases tentacles and absorbs Juzi into his body. In the library, someone enters and stabs Conwen. Tu Ling then incapacitates the villain. Conwen is rushed to the hospital. Unexpectedly, Li Mu arrives to meet them. In front of Li Mu, Guan Ning realized that all of this was a trap, which Li Mu had arranged for Kangwen to include a character named Juicy, similar to her daughter's name. If Guan Ning succeeded in killing Kangwen and then Li Mu killed Guan Ning, the police would believe Guan Ning committed suicide after killing his daughter's kidnapper. Li Mu then explains that he wants to kill Kangwen and remove him to become the company's heir to Aladdin. Guan Ning realizes that his dreams have led him to this point, destined to meet Kang Wen and help him finish his novel. By completing the novel, he believes he can save Juzi and bring her back to life. Ling Wu tries to take the laptop from Guan Ning but Tu Ling throws it and beats him. Guan Ning continues writing the novel. The story resumes with Juzi still alive inside Red Min. Then suddenly from far away came Red Smoke. It is the Red Knight. It turns out that he is Juzi's father who was kidnapped and made a slave by Red Min. Thanks to the sound of the flute, Juzi's father regained consciousness and then attacked Redmin. Juzi's father shoots at Redmin, overwhelming him. When he is off guard, Redmin attacks Juzi's father but is met with resistance. As Redmin weakens, Juzi's father and Kanwen attempt to remove the sword embedded in Redmin's forehead. Redmin revives and beats Juzi's father repeatedly. When Kanwen was about to get up, it turned out that the devil's armor was still alive. He stuck to Kanwen's body again. The demon armor made Kanwen climb up the tree. Kongwen grabs the sword, his father Chiyushin's weapon, from Redman's forehead. With Juzi's father's help, Kongwen successfully cuts Redman, defeating him and rescuing Juzi. At the hospital, Kongwen survives. Outside, Guan Ning sees a young man singing Juzi's song with a girl beside him. Recognizing the girl, Guan Ning tearfully sings the lullaby to his daughter Juzi. The girl turns around, revealing herself as Juzi. Guan Ning has brought his daughter back to life. They reunite and Guan Ning promises never to leave her alone again. Thus concludes the story of the Writers of a Sea. I hope you enjoyed the storyline presented. Apologies for any mistakes in the narration. As usual, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Write your critiques and suggestions in the comment section. That's all from Flick Fusion. See you in the next video.